Hello there, very warm welcome to you to the Green at Morton weekly update as sponsored by Meet Tears, the auctioneers. Your chance to get behind the scenes at Capitol Park and I'm very pleased to say to do just that. I'm joined by the Morton manager, David Hopkins. David, thanks for coming in today. No problem, Jerry. Morning. Good morning to you. Um, so much to talk about, but let's get straight to the crunch. Air United, Tuesday night, what a game. Yeah, it was fantastic. I thought, uh, obviously playing a team that's uh, been, had a fantastic season, fantastic team. And we knew it was going to be tough. Uh, we, we made one one mistake early in the game, 20 minutes, and, and they scored a fantastic goal. But so credit to the players. They, they went back in the game with a fantastic goal from Calvin. And then we defended superbly. I think the players are trying to make up for cut to eradicate the mistakes they made late on in the game on Saturday. And they uh, scored another fantastic goal from Nicky Cadden. So fantastic three points. And it just shows you the mentality the players have after maybe Saturday's disappointment to come back. and go to a very difficult place and a very good team and pick up three points. Yeah, we did talk about your personal disappointment on Saturday and the team as well, the boys were saying that. But you're right, I mean, to go down to Somerset Park when probably a lot of people would be thinking it'd be great to come away with a point. That fighting spirit in the squad again to come back from a goal down and get a result. Yeah, I thought uh, we, we had to change the team up a wee bit. Made one or two changes to the team. Obviously, Jim McAllister had missed out because he'd flew. And uh, he trained Sunday and Monday, but I didn't feel he was, if he was right. Cameron Blues came into the team who wasn't even on the bench. And I thought Cameron was magnificent. And uh, everybody was. I think everybody played a role to make sure we, we, we tried to get three points. And uh, I don't think many people would have thought we went down there and won. So it's credit to the players. Uh, it's credit to the staff uh, how hard we work to try and get the, the players to this level of fitness. And, uh, and I think you can see it now. I think the fans can see it. And I think now I'd like to maybe, maybe just push on now and, and see where we can end up because it's a very tough league. I think we've, we've been on a good run. But the, these things in this league, everybody knows, you can be an upset very quickly. So we have to stay focused and I think the players are doing that fantastically well. Yes, because now you're looking up the way. You're only three or four points off the playoff position. I know other teams have got games in hand, but that, that is the future, isn't it? Yeah, I just think it's important that we set our stall out in the, the season and first and foremost is sustain the league. There's probably five or six other clubs in the same position. And also you get bigger clubs who are looking to the, to the playoffs. But it's just the players, we just need to stay positive. I think we, since the turn of the year, obviously it's going to take us five, six months to get everybody back to where we want to be, or trying to get them where I want to be. And uh, it, it's, it's coming that way. I think the players are relying on the things that I'm telling them to do now, and which is a good thing. And it's both ways. I think the players deserve a lot of credit. And the players who aren't playing, because we have got a squad of 21 players who are all, as a manager, it's sometimes it's difficult to manage, but here it's fantastic because I think everybody buys into what you want to do and they know at some stage they're going to get game time and, and when they do come in, I think they're focused and ready to play. Well, one of the boys that's taken advantage of that recently is, is Calvin Orsi. You, know, you picked Calvin up in the summer and brought him to the club. He's, he's really bulked up because he's gone from this part-time to full-time and he's really adapted. And, of course, he scored a great goal the other night. Yeah, as I says. Uh, I've watched Calvin closely when he was at Queen's Park when I was the manager at Livingston and uh, obviously went to Brecon, I've seen them there. And uh, sometimes you look at people's desire in the game and their passion for football and I think he was one of them players that always stood out when I seen him. And I think sometimes when, when you go part-time and you try to buy into a full-time routine, it's difficult. But he's, he's, he's worked hard. He's sometimes not even in a match day squad, or he has been, but not made the bench. He's, he's, never, he's never moaned. He's never whinged, he's never thought, how am I not playing? He's just, he's just, he's head down and worked and I think coming now over the past probably six or seven weeks, you see, he's been in the gym, he's getting fitter, he's getting stronger and he's a real handful and he gives us something different we don't have. And I think against Dundee United, he was superb and I left him out, which he probably is the heart rate. <laughs> but he's come back in again and he gives us something different from a bench, but I thought even uh, t the other night he was terrific and fully deserved his goal. I don't want to pin you down on this because obviously the contract talks are ongoing, but he's clearly a boy you want to have at the club. Yeah, I think it's, it's important that we, uh, we, we don't take players for one season, hopefully. There's, I know there'll be one or two that might get better offers and, and move on financially, which we can't compete with, which is understandable. But I think where we have to be now is the players who are 21, 22, 19, 20, all these kind of bracket. Th these are the boys that you can probably sign again, maybe a bit quicker, because they want to stay, they want to learn. They want to be coached. So other players that might be a bit older, 
probably know now they're at a stage where they, they might want to move on, get more money, which is understandable. And I always say if players move on for here as long as they go to a bigger club and they're getting financially more money, then I've done my job. But the other players at that age group, I like to try and get tied in quicker and then it's something you can build over the next two or three seasons. Let's look ahead then. Um, you can't go further south or further north than go to Queen of the South and Inverness. You're doing it over a three, four day period. What's your expectations these next couple of games? Yeah, I think everything's going to be difficult. I think it's a, it's a case now where we've, we've played Saturday, Tuesday, we're playing Saturday, Tuesday and Saturday again against the Broth. So it's a tough schedule. I think it's about managing the players now. It's about making sure uh, the gym, the ice baths, food, preparation, sleep, rest is so important now. And uh, for us to play on Saturday here, play on Tuesday, again we just looked at the GPS numbers yesterday and they're fantastic from the players. So it shows you they're in a good place. They're in a good mind space and uh, it's going to be tough. Queen of South are always a difficult team. Alan's got them set up, maybe probably similar to ourselves. Everybody gets through a stage in this season where you, you draw a couple of games or else you win a game and your closest competitor wins. Because the, really the games have been tight against Queen yeah, of South. Yeah, of South, course. I think I don't think we've beat them yet. I think every game's been a draw. So it's going to be a very tough game. They've got some fantastic players. I think people don't realise how uh, well organised they're going to be. It's going to be tough. And you have to have, give the same commitment that we've been given over the past six, seven weeks to make sure we get something out of the game. Now, I know talking to you about the support, you're very big on the, the travelling support. We'd expect a decent crowd down at uh, Palmerston on, on Saturday, but I mean, Inverness on a Tuesday night, it's difficult to get up there, isn't it? Yeah, it's difficult. But I said, we, we looked at Tuesday and there were 250, 300 Morton fans who were exceptional, I must say. Uh, even at one each, they were singing, they were, they were encouraging the team, and uh, that was fantastic. And I think it gave the players a, a good boost. I think even you've seen the second goal on Twitter, uh, the players and the fans, as the reports starting to get there, and I think that's so important. And I think tomorrow could be, as you say, it's another long journey down to Queen of South and then Inverness. But as I say, any tickets that the players don't use, we, we, we distribute them amongst the fans that travel, and Dave McKinnon will go and obviously speak to. Uh, the supporters clubs and people who travel and we can't give everybody a ticket but at least we try and give the tickets that are left over for, for the supporters because we know it's a travel on Saturday and then to travel up to Inverness on a Tuesday night is uh, it'll take some doing but I'm sure some of the Morton fans will, will, will make a journey. Now that's something that some people don't know that the players tickets are distributed among the support. Yeah I think it's something we spoke about in the summer, we thought you know, sometimes we go somewhere and maybe people's parents can't make girlfriends, wives, whatever reason and we just decided as a club to, to, to give some back to the fans. So any time we do have tickets, then they will be distributed as, as, uh, as best we can. We just can't keep getting the same people. But as I said, Dave, Dave McKinnon will go and, and speak to people and give them out. So it's, I think it's a nice gesture from the club and I think the fans appreciate it. Well, listen, we've talked about the present, we've talked about the future. Let's have a wee chat about the past. Uh, last weekend was Andy Ritchie's. 64th birthday, King of Capital. He was, of course, in hospitality as he always is, and we had a, a jersey yes. made up as well. You're a modern man, fond memories of the big man. Yeah, I think, you know, well, as a season ticket holder here, me and my, my grand used to come every week, and I think 90%, 99% of people came to Capital because of Andy. But he had a fantastic football team. I think the players at that time, uh, Jim Tomley, he had, uh, John McNeil, who I play, managed to play with towards the end of his career as a young boy. And uh, fantastic players, Neil Orr, everybody. He threw a whole team, Roy Baines. And th these are things where I always remember the thing that you're going to bring up was uh, I was right in line when Andy scored the free kick against Alan Ruff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, he's, he's a fantastic man, I think he's a fantastic player. I think he's a great ambassador for the club now. And uh, no, I've got a lot of time from. And I think, I said to him four weeks ago, I think he was the one that made me want to come and play for Morton. Seriously? Yeah, because I think everybody, he came, he been a day much in the game, and he scored a fantastic goal or a free kick. And I think, and you ask anybody back to that era, and I think they always came to see Andy because he was a magician, and the pitches weren't their best. He used to get kicked up and down, but he, he was also could handle himself. And uh, I just liked the way he played football. He played with a smile on his face, and some of the goals he scored here. Were fantastic. So, I'm not trying to text me all night, but I must have his old number. So, <laughs> no, it's delighted for him. It's, it's, it's great. It's great that he's back at the club. And I say these, these memories, and you see Cap what your time, and it's, it's packed air rafters. You probably couldn't get in here. So, it's been fantastic memories for me, and I'm sure there were a lot of older Morton fans who are in the same boat. 
and you did something that no Morton manager has ever mm. done. You get Andy Ritchie into the gym. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to see a paint on himself. No, <laughs> I thought it was a, I thought it was a, a, a great tribute to him. I think, uh, I think it, obviously he retired at a, a younger age in football. I think he probably admit he could have played on probably a lot longer than he did. And uh, it was just me coming back to the club and all my memories, all the good things. And I think it was a, a fitting tribute that we got a, a picture of a legend put up in the gym. So it's, it's here for a long time. We've got the jersey, uh, 64 on the back, obviously. Hard to believe that's his yeah. age, of course. And we're going to auction this. Um, would you fancy a wee punt on that yourself? Yeah, wouldn't mind. Well, I've already got one of Andy's. Have uh, you? Yeah, with uh, I think it's about 10, 15 euros a night in the spinnaker. I think Brian Clement done it, and it was a, it was a, a signed Andy Ritchie retro shirt. And I don't think many people are happy because there were four or five people <laughs> who wanted it, but I had to get it. So that's got pride of place in my house. So I was delighted that I managed to get it. Brilliant. If you want to bid for Andy's shirt, just go on to the Morton website, www.gmfc.net, and you'll get details for the link that you can auction for Andy's shirt and put a bid in if you can. David, thanks for joining us as always, and uh, good luck this weekend and indeed on Tuesday night. Thanks very much, Jerry. Thanks for joining us on the Greenock Morton weekly update as sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers. <laughs>